the main event here real quick. We had the uh, crowning of the first ever IWGP Women's Champion in the finals of this tournament. They gave out the toy, you know, the trinket. <laughs> the trinket. You know, you know. Uh, the, uh, the Pirate Princess Kyrie she defeated Mayu Iwatani 25 minutes and 28 seconds in one heck of a main event. This was awesome. Yes. Um, I went four and three quarters on this match. I was I think this is Kyrie's best match since she's been back. I think some of her matches have just been like, okay, and it really hasn't like, I don't think she's like really got to stretch her legs um, much in like main events, but this weekend like kind of belonged to her, I think. And um, it was, uh, you know, it was cool to see, see her win. Uh, I had picked Mayu going into it. And I, th I think a lot of people like, you know, were upset Mayu lost. But um, for me, this like kind of comes down to, you know, what we, kind of thought this belt would be um and we know no new, new japan and um you know they they like people from wwe um Kyrie's a big name uh internationally and they're gonna they're gonna start it with her who says mayu can't like you know win it one day but um i do understand like those those people that, that were wanting mayu to win but this match was sensational um lots of emotion lots of just physicality and uh just kicking the shit out of each other like like this was they they came through and delivered um heavy and i was proud to have like been following stardom to to let them uh you know to, for them to uh lead with a main event like this in this uh you know uh fashion because there, you know there's a lot of like you know people that you know they they like they, not beyond Josh, who's who's doing a gimmick. If, if you guys didn't know, um, like that, come out here and just say that they don't like Joshi. They don't understand it. They don't do anything. I feel like I could fucking put an alien uh, here and met, let them watch this match, and they could they could figure out what's going on here. <laughs> yeah, I really really enjoyed this match. Um, I mean, I think we could probably safely say this is the greatest women's match in the history of New Japan Pro Wrestling. <laughs> 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 but um. I, I enjoyed it to the point where I'm in the same rating as you, Rich. I'm four and three quarters. I thought this was, for me, the match of the weekend anywhere in the world, including, you know, AEW and what I saw in stardom. I thought that this was a, a truly fitting, uh, you know, inaugural title crowning match. Um, and the story that was kind of laid out with these two women and the history that they had with one another and with Kyrie leaving and then coming back and everything like that, it, it just all kind of fit together. The tournament was booked to crescendo here, and it, it really paid off. It was awesome. And the match itself, I mean, it had a little bit of everything in there. You know, you saw the chain grappling. You saw some of the high-speed high spots. You saw, you know, great heat and everything. People were, you know, uh, there, there was high-flying but what I loved was like the violent nature of it when they were going blow for blow and the back, you know, the, I, I forget what it's called, but the back fists and just, it, it, yeah, there was some really, really brutal stuff in here, which like, you know, really impressed me. I don't know. I thought this match was incredible. And, and as far as the outcome goes with Kyrie, it just, to me, from a business standpoint, I always thought this is what they're going to do. Uh, keep in mind, I'm not a stardom viewer, so maybe being on the outside looking in, it's a little different. But to me, she's this hot commodity that they've invested into that is currently not hot and kind of needed something to catapult and push her back to the status she was previously. So I think, you know, Mayu at this point is almost sort of like Tanahashi and can be fine after a loss like this and, you know, still probably has a lot more to achieve and like rich said probably could win this title down the road but uh i think not only for the audience in the west but also for Kyrie herself it makes sense across the board for her to be the first champion and you know put the attention back on her and maybe heat her back up mm -hmm. yeah and it's like we mentioned the last couple of weeks you know this title is going to be used for you know strong tours and strong pay-per-views and Kyrie has that WWE um, experience and fan base and exposure here um, in America. So if you also Mayu does have some exposure too, but not to that level. You know Mayu's done a lot of, of Ring of Honor, 
And I think a lot of diehard fans know who she is, but I would I would assume that more people probably know who Kyrie is based off of her time in NXT and the main roster. Uh, so using her as a draw on these uh, strong tapings, these you know strong pay per views they've been doing like Windy City Riot and Capital Collision. Um, you can use her to draw, especially if they they want to try and run a little bit of bigger buildings. I think that'd be an interesting attraction. But yeah, overall the match was great. I also went uh, four point seven five and. Yeah, I gasped so many times at Kyrie when she was doing the spinning back fist, and she she was killing Mayu with those. And of course, Mayu is bumping around like crazy, like her her neck is you know just made of springs or you know it's Gumby clay. Um, and so yeah, they told an incredible story. Obviously, there's, there's a ton of backstory with the whole you know, being two or three daughters of stardom, and just kind of their history here. Like we mentioned earlier, Waka added a lot of great stuff too throughout this match and how emotional she was getting and just crying as the match was um, going on. But yeah, just really, really incredible matchup. A great way to kind of kick off this you know, lineage and legacy of the IWGP women's title. Dr. Josie, tag in. Hot tag. Um, I don't have much more to say than what y'all already said. Um, I will say that, like, you know, I my stupid phone, like, gave me a push notification in the middle of recording the the you know post show thing for um um all out i'm sorry all out um, um full, gear. full gear yesterday so like in the middle of the podcast i looked down at my phone's post notification it says Kyrie wins i did you fuck tam nakano t- fuck like what anyway so like uh, you know uh, my um my initial viewing thing is ruined i'm gonna have to watch it again to get an idea of like you know like how i felt watching it for real because like i I'm always lower on matches than I've already when I already know the result, and then like the second time watching, I kind of get like an actual deeper appreciation for the match. But um, generally speaking, like this is very much like their last two title matches from 2015 to 17. Um, uh, the red belt match was in 2015, 2017 was the white belt match. Uh, Kyrie won the 2015 match for red belt. Uh, Mayu won the white belt match in 2017 before Kyrie left for WWE. Um, and it fits in line. It's a, it's more physical than both of those. Just from the brutality of uh the in um, just the brutality of like the spinning back fist. But generally speaking, like Kyrie, when she has big title matches, when she was in Stardom at first before she left for WWE, it was like, I am going to work over your core. I'm going to work over your core, like Bret Hart style. There's going to be obviously I'm going to do other stuff besides it, but like I'm going to focus on your core. And then I'm going to drop an elbow on your back and I'm going to flip you over and drop an elbow on your chest and you can't kick out because you're done and you can't bridge out nothing because your, your core is destroyed. Mayu always will answer with, I'm just going to destroy her right arm, her right arm. So we're like, she if she's going to eventually get up there, drop an elbow, it's going to come at a cost in very similar to, you know, you have messed up ribs, you hit a frog splash, you have to sell and you can't get the fifth and fall because you're in so much pain. And, and that's always been a trade between both of them. And this was cla- their classic story of them doing that but with that twist of like the brutality and the incredible selling and like this is the reason why i've said that like mayu is like the best combination bumper seller i've ever seen that right there is on display um and i mean they they just had a they just had a great match this, this is their best match that i've seen them have um and like those matches that i that I said from 2015 17 like those are the reason why like we're here covering this and that's the reason why like we started covering one H one H started covering stardom was like going through like watching Kyrie in in, in um in uh, NXT and hearing it there's another woman like named Mayu Iwatani and Io Shirai and Io comes to WWE and like all right let's let me look around and see like see their matches and is being blown away from their matches with each other and their matches with Mako Satomura and just being like I gotta watch this. I just gotta watch this. And like this was what was I this is what I was seeing. I don't think this was this isn't the best starter match ever or anything like that, but um this is the best Kyrie match. It's one of it's I think it's on the top shorthand list though, but like um it, it was it felt really good to see her this weekend kind of reach back and like be the person that like I you know would like go into their vault and look at and kind of be like, what was she like outside of WWE before? And just to see like the, the Mako matches or the EO matches or the Mayu matches or matches with like, you know, foreign, foreign, uh, foreigners that like weren't all that good, but see how she could carry it in, in, um, in big matches and stuff. And 
with some of the younger wrestlers that are now more experienced and some of the best wrestlers in the world. And like, it was like, you know, all that time away from or in WWE, like being told like less is more all the time and to slow down and uh, don't hit as hard or or all this other stuff she was told like that was against her like instinctual training for what she was put through like from Fuka and Nanai and all those other people um, to see that like you know ever since she first came back you can kind of see like the the physicality picked right back up like her her first weekend back like she did a shoot head butt and then like ruptured her eardrum right but to 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 get back to this point where it's like oh someone's face might get broken right at that point we're, we're back at that point now with Kyrie in the journey uh so like that was really fun and Mayu like you know she's my favorite wrestler for a reason um when back against the wall big stakes she does this Rich has seen it right like the, the, the you know the um the 2020 series with uh Takumi Aroha was this it was, it was this level of violence I think those matches were better than this, but still the same thing. It's just she can when she wants to like bring out like the killer super physical, this may be going beyond the pale type of thing, she can do that. Um, and it was cool to see her dust that off because she really hasn't done that um much since she lost the red belt in 2020. Um, so I you know, I, I love the match and was super happy. And like for those two, I know they were happy that they could have that match with you know, the top the stuff they've ever they've been able to do with each other in the past. Like, I know they told the story of Mayu never said she never liked each other. That's bullshit to friends. That's just she's kayfabing to try to add to the story of like them at the end, like when they're both in tears on the floor on the, on the mat. Like that was the get to that point. And like it, it was awesome. It was one of the more emotional matches in stardom in um the last few years. It was awesome. What do you make of the um the uh you know there's a lot of people upset like about Mayu not not being the one to get the uh get tapped on her head for the for the belt. So Waka <laughs> look Waka Waka is not in, in star. She is not being led by Mayu Atani, but she was like she was a mess for Mayu. Uh but yeah um I can understand the frustration of that uh you know because people have the thing about part timers or whatever else. Um there's also the part where like the IWGP women's title more or less is uh, serving the same function that the SWA belt had and Mayu relinquished that belt mm -hmm. um, recently to get this, to focus on this belt. And now like she doesn't have it. <laughs> um, so um, I can understand being frustrated because like, you know, regardless of whatever Kyrie does with it, um, those matches are gonna be great, but like she's not as she's not as good as Mayu is. But whatever, um, Mayu's gonna have another run before it's all over, said and done. Like she has a movie coming out, I think next year or 2024. So she'll have the run then. It'll be fine. Yeah. Um, now, uh, you know, I didn't see. I had to after the match ended like quickly. I couldn't get to the post match interaction between whatever Tam and Kyrie said. But like Tam and Kyrie, like since since the first press conference when Kyrie came back, the first person she said she wanted to face in a singles competition was was Tam. So I mentioned to see that. Apparently, that's on uh, for Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah. yeah right? So yeah, Tam came out and challenged. So it is official. January fourth, the first defense of the IWGP Women's Title will be Kyrie defending against Tam Nakano. That's gonna be fun. That's the first match I wanted to see Kyrie have coming back. Like I'm a I'm a big Tam fan because like Tam's my second favorite wrestler. Uh, like I became a fan of Tam because she reminded me so much of <laughs> it, honestly because of these two. Like she reminds so much of Kyrie. And then like at the time Tam was like like this hype woman for Mayu. Like Mayu's the greatest. She's awesome. All I want to do is be a tag team partner. She's so great. And then like over time as she grows, you see like Nah, she's fucking great too. Um, so yeah, like it's really interesting to see like these two similar, similar ages, similar sizes, similar mind or thought processes for like selling and putting over stuff. Like it's gonna be interesting to see what they do. Like it's gonna, I, 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 I don't think it'll be as good as this. I don't think so. Maybe we'll see. But like, um, their exchange in um Sumo Hall early this year like was electric. Um, in their tag match. So like, I'm not gonna put a limit on what they could do. But like, at the worst, it'll be great. Yeah, 